Hey, this episode of Back Trails, we're doing one of the things that we love, elk hunting. We are going to go and revisit and relive my very first successful elk hunt. You know, there's something about elk hunting. Yes. It's not, you know, a lot of people go, man, turkey hunting is like elk hunting. To a certain extent, you right, call, call, you get a response, get a response they come but in. But there's like six or 700 then, pounds more. Yeah, at about 700 turkey. pounds. Yeah. And then, I mean, the excitement, the, the adrenaline rush is a little bit different than turkeys. A lot. Yeah, a lot. I, I think yeah. so. So what we're going to do this time on back trails yep. is we're going to go Colorado, go elk hunting. And actually, this is actually my first elk hunt that I got an elk on. Yeah, because she struggled. She had a few, I but, did struggle. but in reality, so does everybody. You know, don't think you're going to go out west and go, oh, yeah, I'm going to shoot an elk every year because that doesn't happen. But no. we sort of solved one issue. We moved out here. Well, yeah, but this is a long time ago. Yeah, this, this was, oh, yeah, this was. This was a long time ago. Went on let's many elk hunting. hunts and just didn't get one. But let's start it, shall we? We are here in Colorado hunting the Sierra Vista Ranch. This is like unbelievable elk hunting. We just got in this afternoon. We're out, we're doing some of the logging roads, just doing some here and there, calling around, doing some cow calling, doing some bugling, just to see if we can hear something. It's an 80,000 acre ranch. So there's plenty of land for us to go and do some scouting on, and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go hop in the vehicle again, go up a little further, do some more calling, and figure out which drainage or which bowl we need to jump down into and go chase one of them big old bowls. You know, Vicki, you, you just talked about something that we, you know, on the show, we're always trying to show the action. Right. But the reality of it is, is, you know, there are so many hours, oh, so, yes. so many days spent, you know, trying to get up on higher vantage points, points, bugling, cow calling, trying to interact, trying to get some type of response. Right. To know that the elk are down there. Once the elk are down there, that's not the big. I mean, that's no, the that, beginning. No, that, that's the beginning. That's where you figure out your plan of attack and wind. When, you're checking you the wind constantly. Do. Yes. You're trying to figure out where are they going. You know, and back then there were no apps on your phone to, to no. say, oh look, no, we're showing you know, that's a drainage. Again. Yeah. Right. That, I mean, there were topo maps. Yeah, and so you try to figure out when you heard something, whether it was down low or like, yes. like you said, we're doing like location calls, trying. Almost like you said a minute ago, turkey calling, you know, you might yep. do a, a owl hoot or something like that. But we're trying to locate the bulls and all the whole herd, and then the games begin. And try to figure out the, you know, interception in between them. But the big thing is, is this is, again, back in a time when there were no fancy apps. No. Should we get going? Sure. Okay. Again, the wind. listening, you get a response. Wind swirls anyways. Little, when it swirls, it's over, you know, and, and in those mountains, those thermals, and you have to understand so many little details. You, we located elk further across valleys, the whole nine yards. But the bottom line here is, again, communicating them. Communicate with them. Try to follow them. Don't try to sound like the biggest, baddest bull. Because, you know, when, when we had, when I had my camp, and it was just north of here, right. it was crazy. We had guys come in, and they practiced all year on their bugles. Oh, yeah. And they sounded like this giant six-by-seven bull that, I mean, just one that would kick your butt. Well, guess what? What if the bull, the biggest bull on that mountainside is a five-by-five, five, he's got seven cows. He hears this, <whistles> you know, glunting and everything else. He's like, whoa, I don't want my butt kicked. He no. hooks his girls and he and runs he over the mountain. Out. Yep. That's right. So try, just try to simulate the sounds you're hearing. You'd be amazed at how that will help and benefit you in, in the future hunts. We just heard another one close up, but now we think the way the wind just swirled, we think maybe he just went back over. I guess that's about 9.30 and um, I guess we're gonna head back over. We dropped our packs probably two or 300 yards back after we were chasing this one bull. Oh, she was two or 300 yards. Okay, maybe it was more than two or 300 yards back. I'm just happy that we dropped them back there and I don't still have it on my back. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. We've learned over the years. Yes. Don't ever drop your pack. No. Nope. No, you know what? If your pack is too heavy to carry all day long, take something out of it that you're not gonna need. I need snacks all the time. Yes, she does. 
I do. You need but water, the, definitely. You, need you know, water. your range finder, all these other little things, but. Right, but if you have a habit of packing too much. Yep. The thing is, is that now with apps, you could go ahead and mark where you dropped your pack. Absolutely. At. Back in the day, if you take your pack and you drop it down because you want to go chasing an elk, that elk, they keep moving. And you can end up going miles yep. and forget where you put your pack. Bottom line, you, here's what you're going to do. Before your elk hunt, you're going to take your backpack out and you're going to put all these, pro all these items and these products that you bought and you're going to go, oh my gosh, all right, and you need it all. And then you're going to put it all in the pack and you're going to put it on and you're going to walk, you know, a hundred yards ago, <gasps> especially in the and mountains, <laughs> you're going to realize that there's a whole lot of different things that you, you what you saw on the books or you saw on the TV is totally different in reality. Right. Then you're going to start taking stuff out. Exactly. Walk another hundred yards. You go. <gasps> <gasps> uh. <laughs> then all of a sudden, about the fifth, sixth time, you're going to realize, you know what? I don't need I half don't that need crap. That stuff. Now I still take a lot of stuff <clears throat> in my pack. I do. Yep. But I've, I'll practice with it, I'll hike with it, I'll get ready for the season with it, loaded. Yes. So then when we get out there, we're ready for it. And the other good thing is now that we live out west, yeah. you can get acclimated to the higher altitudes way quicker. Yeah. Um, you, you know, and the other thing, there are some very critical things that you need. Toilet paper. Just put it His out there. His pack is usually filled with it. Usually, yeah. Yeah. Now this guy, remember this one? Oh, I Beautiful do. Beautiful bull, but he stayed far wide, and then we had a younger, younger one come yep. in where I had a shot place. Yeah. And of course, here we are looking at him going, Pff. you know, it was like dangle. Here's the cheese. It's a big guy, walks a little too far back, and then that younger guy comes right in close. That's what happens when you're out. You know, the other thing, too, that you're trying to watch is you notice how we, you know, we set up with brush around us, not necessarily in front of us. You want to make sure that you break up that human silhouette as they come in. But, but, sometimes you're going to get caught no matter what. You all of a sudden going through an area, you bugle, and he hits you right here. You don't, you like, you, right. you don't know what to do. Two bulls. One right there, one over there. Being at the right place at the right time. Absolutely. You could have multiple encounters on a daily basis. And we did. Yes, we did. And we did. Yep. Look at him wallowed up. All full of mud. Yep, I mean, that's... Those are telltale signs of the rut. They're going in, there's wallows, they're j jumping in them, they lay in them, they roll in them, they thrash their antlers in them. Thermals, once again, Look at them. messed us up. I, Just mean, that, I was ready for that one. That little swirl. That tree down there was 27 yards. I was gonna draw my bow back, but I was afraid I might actually hit my trigger. He <laughs> gave me that perfect quarter in one shot. You know what? That That's right, we all cut. It is. We love so, it. Now let's, let's, should we get this one set up? Should we talk about this? Yes, this is, okay. okay. So what we have going on is we've been hunting all week long. Yep. And we had the wind swirling, we had everything, we had rain. We had one rain, day. which helped, which helped in that, in the mountain area. It, it was it, it quieted everything down. Even though, don't kid yourself, elk make a lot of noise walking through they the do. mountains. You don't need to be quiet walking around. <clears throat> no. You don't want but to bang you, stuff, but If you're yeah. walking, you don't want any metal clanging, you don't want any artificial noises, but just do little cow calls here and there. Make it sound like you're a little bit of a herd going through. That will, will definitely help you. Absolutely, so this is one of the last days of our hunt. Right. Every time we get close to a bull, something would happen. The thermals, the wind would switch, something else would go on. The little ones would come walking up where the, the ones that we were trying to go after weren't getting close enough. We had the rainstorm and things got kind of quiet for about a day. Well, and what we tried to do is once we got a response, Right. We could definitely hear some cow calling too. Mm -hmm. We felt the best thing to do is not to go, not to keep bugling to him. Right, we kind of snuck in. We wanted to get into his backyard right. and we didn't make a sound. We didn't cow call, we didn't do anything, but we did try to be as sneaky as possible. And we were in mid to late afternoon, but yes. we sat and we were quiet with just a few little cow calls once in a blue moon. 
Nothing crazy, but we sat until he got himself worked up. Then is then we fired him up. Yes. We let him know, hey, we're a small, you know, sound like a more subordinate bull. And we cow called back and forth. Hal and I were cow calling and bugling back and forth. So we made him feel like we're in his backyard and we got some of his girls. And we have a herd because Ralph <clears throat> was sitting right with me filming and then Hal was further away Up into our right. doing some other calling as well. So, I mean, we're encroaching on his area and his harem. Again, we didn't call till we got in there. We let it calm down, and then we started mewing and cowing back, cow talking back and forth. Let him know there's some girls, and then we let him out with a real shallow, short bugle for that threat. And that's, this is what happened. This is actually the herd bull and we drew him away from his other cows, simulating that we had some cows and now this little satellite bull moved in. Oh, look he's at looking. that bull. Oh my gosh. He's beautiful. <clears throat> he's 60 yards and I never had a clear shot at him. He's got a couple cows with him. It was a good bull. <sighs> so then what we did is we backed out, we came around, got in a little better position. And this guy shows up. It's goring into him. <laughs> it's an airbag. It's an airbag, but it's goring up into him. He's goring away really steep. beyond excited. Now I've been on a bunch of hunts before this yes. is my first elk hunt and at that point that was the farthest shot I had ever taken on an animal. Right. 35 yards. My thunder had hit right where I needed it to go and I couldn't believe it. I mean and I'm everyone's shaking, seen this for I'm years. You, you look at Vicky and all of us and our reactions that's why we hunt. This is what it's for. That adrenaline oh. rush that nothing and kids hear me out. There's no drug, there's no alcohol on this planet. None that could ever give you that true adrenaline rush no. that wild hunting can. Absolutely. Oh my God. Look at the, look at the freaking mass on those dies. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Oh my God. <laughs> and oh, it might be the biggest elk in the house still. I'm just saying. Whatever. I've been crying like a big baby since I shot him. He is just, oh my gosh. He is just magnificent. Can I just scream really loud just once? I did it, sorry, I had to. Oh my gosh. That was incredible. I mean, to share that with you, now reliving it again, it just, and now we'll go back to the house because he is in He's the living room. He's hanging in the living room. Yep. And, and uh, you know, I mean, it's one of those things where it's one of those goals. It's one of those bucket lists. And I'd been on so many of the hunts trying to do it. And you would think that, oh, yeah, it's so easy. It's not. And then when it happens, that emotion and that scream was hysterical. It just, hey, I here's just, a good one. Just right now, you just saw the bull. You saw some stills of him. S send us an email. Let us know what you think that bull scores. Think so? Yeah. Okay. All right, we'll see what it says. We'll see what they think. Well, we're right at the edge of Timberline. We've already heard some bulls bugling back up here. We're gonna glass up above this timber and see if they're on these peaks. And as they start to come in, we'll work our way to them. So we'll see what happens. Now again, you'll see us slipping on our little booties love those types of things because they allow us to be quieter in the woods you can wear gym shoes and now today boy there's a lot of new shoes that are softer sole that right. you can step on stones and branches and not break them so again just cer certain little things that do help you see us carrying a decoy you know we've used montana decoys for a long time why right. because they work they're portable they're lightweight so many of these little things and what we're watching we located this herd way up on the mountain flat. Right. You know, in, in nothing, but we know where they're coming. Yeah. They're coming back into this timber. We killed him.
there's just something about watching uh, those elk. Just, they're so majestic. You, you, you're talking about an animal, six, seven, eight hundred pounds, just magnificent, phenomenal Excited. eating, <laughs> drooling, just everything, and you're right there. Now, if you hear that, oh, oh, just like that, believe it or not, you can give it right back to them. If yes. they're not looking at you directly, just go, oh, and you'll be, you'll watch them. They'll stop and they'll look and they'll try to figure out. Most time they won't run. They'll just go back. So what happened? Did the bigger guy come I let come him up? walk. We could hear him coming. <laughs> And I'm like, okay. Now I drew as he was coming up, right, right when he turned. Look at him. Spitfire Nicely done. right on the crease. You're gonna watch that bull just go down about 40 yards. Look at the shot. That's and he awesome. goes down. You know, here's the thing is <clears throat> you shot Gosh. yours with a Spitfire, I shot mine with a Thunderhead. Yep. I'm a fixed head, he's a mechanical head. Here's the deal. My poundage is not your poundage. Nope, nope. Your draw length is a hair shorter. Right. So, so right. you what 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 we try? Yeah, not Just much. Okay, but <laughs> what we're trying to do is explain that if you want to increase penetration, decrease cutting surface. Right. Does that make sense? In other words, don't go to a giant mechanical broadhead if you're shooting low poundage, have a low kinetic energy status. Right, and I average 56, 58 pounds on my Hoyt, but I'm still not pulling back 65, 70 pounds. So I have energy for whitetails and bears and thinner skin and yep. animals, antelope, but on my elk and the moose hunts, I'm gonna use the fixed head just because I want that extra oomph to go through it. And she's not going to a fixed blade. She's going to like a Thunderhead or a Hellraiser. Right. One that's not cutting, trying to pu push a giant, you know, just fixed blade head, you know, two inch cutting diameter or something like that. Because no. you got to remember, the more you're trying to push through, the more energy it takes to drive it through. Increase penetration, decrease cutting surface. And you'll be amazed because if you take that shot like you did on that quartering away, right over that hip, yep. going right through that animal, Right to the boiler maker. That's it. You took everything out. I did. I did. I know that bull's not bigger than Mickey, but there ain't no way I'm not taking him home. I shot him at about 23, 24 yards. Oh, baby. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Hey, John. Good old Hal, man. What a great guy. Absolutely. Yeah. We are bugling bulls here at Sierra Vista. Not to mention the meat. Mm. Oh, unbelievable. Like, give up everything for elk and moose meat. You know, so, so the big thing here is what we're trying to do at Back Trails is to bring back some of the hunts, give you a little more intel that we didn't have to share all these, you know, these past 20 right. some years, you know, on television, yep. but to give you an idea, just those little tips and tricks, almost like seeing us in a live seminar, but. Right, so we're, we're just going over our footage again because why not? I mean, Why the memories. Not? Every time we start putting together one of these episodes, we watch the footage we relive and, we're, it. and we're like, holy cow, remember that? And bottom line, don't be afraid to reach out and say, hey guys, right. listen, can we, can we, could I see this hunter? Could I do that? Could I see that? Could you explain a little more in, yep. in, in a situation? This is what it's about. This yes. new world that we live in Absolutely. is a lot smaller because we can communicate in so many different ways. And that's what Back Trails is all about. You know, there, there's a couple things that we learn on every single hunt. And I shouldn't yes. say a couple, there's a bunch. Yes. If you pay attention to them. Right? I Absolutely. mean, literally, we were in a phenomenal area. Yes. Lots of activity, lots of calling back and lots forth. Lots of animals. If we learned one thing, it was don't try to sound like the biggest, baddest bull. Right, absolutely. And like you said, this is the key. You don't want to scare away that bull that no. could be right around the corner if you make you sound bigger than that one is. Right. You know, again, try to keep this in the back of your thought process. Curiosity kills the cat. <laughs> Because what or happens, bull, or the big bull, or the bull that's the right. Bull. What we're trying to talk about is saying, listen, don't go in there trying to sound like you just won, you know, Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation's, you know, national bugling contest. <laughs> yeah, try to go in there that. and try to be a little bit more subordinate. Try to yes. just raise that curiosity. Let them know, hey, from your bugle, 
You do this and I said, pew, pew. Let them know there's a couple girls and maybe right. a couple calves. You know, maybe break a branch or step on one. Because here's a good one. If you've ever walked in the woods, right? And if you go to snap a branch, you snap a branch this way, correct? No well, animal does that. No, think about it. Animals, when they snap branches, they step it's because they step on them. So, I mean, we learned that a bunch of years ago. So if you're out there and you're trying to make noise like you're an animal out there, whether it's a moose or an elk or whatever, don't take that branch and crack it this way. Break it down or put it on the ground it's and step on it. It's amazing the sound difference. It's a huge difference. And that could bring that bull, that elk, that moose, whatever it is, into, into that, a little into closer that distance. Range. We hope you guys enjoy this episode. And what's the next episode? Do we know? No, I don't know. Okay, well, tune Let's back in. Let's live we'll it find when we another live it. One.